from Chicago's Can TV. A look at the week's events is reported in the newspapers, in the blogs and online, and on radio and TV. This is Chicago Newsroom. Well, hi again and welcome to Chicago Newsroom. I'm Ken Davis. So were you one of those thousands of people who got dinged by the rogue red light cameras when those cameras decided all on their own to start nabbing right turn on red violators before their little silicon consciousnesses got the better of them and they decided to just go back to their old jobs serving humanity and saving human life? Well, or maybe you were one of those thousands of people who got the soulless letter in the mail with the languid little picture and said to yourself, you know, I don't really think I did this, but hey, it's a robot and robots can't lie to me and we surrendered the right years ago to actually appear before a court and have some kind of a judge render a decision. So if the machine says guilty, why bother cuff up a hundred bucks? Well, as you probably know, the Tribune did a pretty spectacular series over the past couple of weeks in which they analyzed millions, and I mean actually millions of tickets, spit out by these digital public servants. And they found out just what you might have suspected, that either a bunch of camera systems just went crazy and started ticketing everybody and then miraculously fixed themselves, possibly the first known case of computer self-awareness and self-improvement, or some folks with knowledge of the system messed around with it to see if they could goose up the revenue. And you know about all of this because a bunch of journalists, journalists led by these two guys, did a lot of old-fashioned hammering to get the story. They didn't just aggregate this from someplace. They wrote it. They worked sources. They crunched data. And they fought like hell to get that data, which is part of what we're going to talk about today. So I am very pleased today to have David Kidwell and Alex Richards right here at the table from the Chicago Tribune. Guys, nice job. And um, I want to talk about how you did the job as well as what you found out on the program today. But welcome. Seriously, glad to Thank have you here. Good to be here. So um, should we start with the biggest of big pictures? I mean, what's the elevator pitch on this story? What did you discover? Well, um, we did analyze. Uh, we asked for and eventually received this database of every ticket issued since 2007 through March of this year. and. Uh, we plotted them. Uh, Alex Richards, uh, very competent and very skilled uh, data guy, data plotted, manipulator. Them, pl plotted them on, uh, we, we call them on EKG, it looks like the heartbeat of every camera in the city. Um, and you can see the tickets per day, how, how, they, how they're plotted for each camera. And, um, and that heartbeat, if it were yours or mine, we'd be in the intensive care unit. <laughs> uh, pretty uh, messed uh, up. Uh, yeah. At some of these cameras, we found these spikes where, where tickets that were cameras that normally issued two, three, sometimes one ticket a day for periods of years, suddenly were shooting, shooting, uh, shooting pictures and, and, and tagging drivers at rates of up to 56 per day uh, for periods of weeks, sometimes days, sometimes weeks, sometimes months. And then as suddenly as they went up, they were right back down to normal again. Right. Um, and and uh, so we presented that information to the city in January and gave them six months to come up with any reason that they might. They, we were shocked when they couldn't give us any legitimate reason for any of this stuff. So we spent the last six months out in the field trying to figure out the answers to these. and. Uh, what you saw in the newspaper was the result of that effort. So, Alex, you, you were responsible for doing this graphing, I take it, right? So you're taking right. this data and you're like laying it into some kind of program and you're seeing it. Sure. So, so were you the first human being to lay <laughs> eyes on this, on this anomaly and actually see it in graphic form? Uh, right, I mean, uh, the way that we handled this information uh, very well could have been. Um, it wouldn't surprise me, I guess. Um, yeah, and it's it's sort of difficult to talk about data sometimes, I think, without people's eyes glazing over. But we did pour over these four million records and, and chart them out. So the way that we, we looked at them to see sort of where these aberrations actually fell, yeah, I think that we were the first to, to really see this in action. According to the city, we were. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. That's, that's a pretty good source, I guess. You know, there are a couple things that I'm, um, that just really stick out to me in this. And one of the things, that, one of the many things I learned is that a lot of these cameras are only issuing like one ticket a day. If you had asked me, I would have even, you know, like a week ago, I would have said, oh, they probably issue 50 tickets a day, but they don't. Right. Does well, that, I mean, there's huge variance in the system. Like some of them, yeah, they do. They issue, they can issue almost 100 tickets a day, while some, you know, may not, may go, you know, several days without issuing a single ticket. 
When so you, when, I mean, when you think when you think about it, I mean, just think about how you drive. I mean, people don't blow red lights. It's Especially it would, if you see a camera. <laughs> you'd, well, you know, you'd be yeah. insane, yeah. right? Either, yeah. either. Uh, um, yeah. What they're trying to do is they're trying to beat a yellow, or they're yeah. rolling yeah. through a right, right, or they're committing some. Uh, Fraction. So, uh, I mean, you would not expect a lot of people just to be blowing the lights. Mm -hmm. be, you'd have a lot more carnage out there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and so, I mean, in these cameras, um, as the city explains and uh, as all of the experts that we talk to uh, understand it, the, the purpose of these cameras is not to issue tickets. The purpose of these cameras is to train drivers over time uh, how to drive, essentially, how the correct behavior. and and. What you're supposed to see on each of these cameras is when they first install them, you see this surge in tickets because people aren't used to the camera. And over time, you'll see the graph go gradually down and then level $200 up. $200 later. That's what, <laughs> well, but that's what it's, th that is the stated purpose for these yeah, cameras. Yeah. Th and, and I've had people at the city tell me, geez, we'd be happy if we never made another dime off these cameras because mm -hmm. that means everybody's driving correctly. But they're not in the budget office, those people. Well, you know, but that's the way, that's the way everybody involved in, in this in, in, in terms of an expert or even at the city, the city's traffic engineers, all say the same thing. That's what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so we talk to the experts, we show the experts these spikes, and they're saying, w wow, that's not supposed to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. That is not fair. Uh, you can't change the rules in the middle mm -hmm. of the game. That's not the purpose of this thing. This isn't a sting operation. This is supposed yeah. to be a safety yeah. countermeasure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, of course, the, there's also a provision in the contract, as, as I understand from reading yeah. your story, that the service provider is supposed to be monitoring this stuff and if they see a camera going just completely off the charts they should go and look at that camera and fix it or or see why it's happening right but it is in the contract it's uh, the daily systems checks for anomalies the word anomalies is in the contract um, we talked to a guy who has was in charge of the software for that uh, program since its inception up until a, a, a year ago when he got laid off in company downsizing, um, we talked to that guy. I, I, I was never, I never knew that we did it. And I don't. And any time, the only time we ever heard of a problem was when somebody called us and said, "Hey, you got a camera down." Yeah, um, he yeah. said it wasn't in the software package, yeah. and he never knew that it was ever done. <laughs> and of course, there's also that other weird thing that you discovered of how you, you see these giant spikes, but in many cases. For the day before, the day after, these cameras just go down to zero. They're just not functioning for a day or so before or after, right. which would, which would at least make a suspicious guy like me think, oh well, that's why they're that's why they're in there, that's the time when they're in there adjusting the software or something. Right, and it's it's very hard to say, but yeah, I mean that that would certainly strike me as an anomaly having a uh, a camera not issue any tickets for for days or sometimes weeks or months at a time, uh, especially leading into a period where uh, you know tickets were sort of off the scale, um, yeah, and yeah. and the composition of the tickets. If you go and look at the actual photographs of the tickets, the composition of or as far as what the behavior of the drivers, what they were doing, was also markedly different than periods before right. as well. And that's a, that's another thing that we have to get into here because, I mean, there's there's so, there's so much of this. With I I want to make sure we spend some time today <laughs> talking about uh, speed cameras, which are completely different animals, located in different places, but they do the same thing. They monitor us and and ding us when we misbehave. But but the red light cameras were as i always understood it set up to catch people blowing through red lights but they came to be used at least you seem to f find that they came to be used as much for catching the rtors the right turn on reds the rolling through the red light now it, was that always the intent of the red light cameras well when when we um I think the, if you ask the city, the intent of the red light cameras <laughs> was to improve safety. I know, it was for the children. Right, yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. and all the experts say that, uh, it, you know, before you install a red light camera, what you're supposed to do is define a problem. Mm -hmm. You just don't sprinkle cameras everywhere mm -hmm. and wait for the money to roll in. You have to have a problem. And if, the, if they have a problem with people having accidents because they're rolling through a right turn on red, then you put a camera there to address yeah. that problem. Yeah. 
That's the way it's supposed to work. But if you did that, would you have 380 or 350 of them all of a sudden all over the city? Well, it, it, it's interesting that you ask that because the city's inspector general, the city's top watchdog, in 2013, at the insistence of several aldermen, asked the city exactly that question, mm -hmm. and he could not come up with an answer. And his audit, at the end of the day, was very, very critical of the city for a complete lack of records mm -hmm. on how they e choose where they put these cameras. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course, the the idea being that this, I mean, <laughs> I can't even imagine how many hours we've spent on this on this show talking about the fact that the city has just always, specifically the mayor, been able to have this totally straight face about how this is being done only because I'm concerned about safety. I'm concerned about people who are just being slaughtered in the carnage of people being killed at these at red lights, and we have to put these cameras up so that we can make people safer. And then we started making $50 million or whatever it was a year on it, and that was a, just a little side benefit. Right. Well, that's, uh, that is essentially how this whole story started. When, when, the mayor, when Mayor Emanuel first took office, one of his first initiatives was to expand this red light camera program into speed cameras. Mm -hmm. And it was about the children, the safety of the children. Uh, and, and we started probing on that, and we started asking for any documents of the city that could help provide some explanation as to the motivation of that and the reality of that. Um, they could never uh, define a problem mm -hmm. with a, a lot of school children being hit by cars going too fast in school zones. There just wasn't a problem. Um, uh, and, you know, I guess you could argue that, you know, one child being hit by a car uh, is enough. Um, but they they made, uh, the mayor himself made some very, very dubious claims about the safety benefits of red light cameras, of speed cameras. He even invoked the name of, uh, there was one six-year-old girl hit and killed by a car. Her name was Diamond Robinson, if my memory serves. Um, uh, about, you know, we need these sp speed cameras for people, for girls like Diamond. Um, well, the problem was that Diamond uh, Robinson was was hit and struck on a weekend when these cameras aren't allowed to be in operation anyway, so the cameras wouldn't have saved her anyway. Mm -hmm. And so there's been a lot of those claims made uh, by the city, and, and 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 we have written stories about each of them. Well, you've you've written stories, and you've had you yourself have had an incredibly contentious interview with the mayor, which I want to reserve some time to talk about too. But Alex, the thing that I, I said before we went on the air that. There's a dual purpose for having you guys here. First of all, I just want to celebrate the fact that you, you got a really good story here, and it, it kind of verifies, I think, some suspicions that a lot of us have had all along about the way these things work or don't work. But the other part of the story is the journalism story. This is Chicago Newsroom. We talk a lot about journalism on this show, and I'm... I'm just really impressed with the amount of work that went into this story. I mean, you pick this paper up and you read the story and there's a couple of papers with it, you know, and you kind of read through it. But this was months of work. No, it really was. Uh, we sort of uh, got started on the actual uh, process of getting the data, um, I mean, really in 2013. Mm -hmm. um, we had uh, a pretty I, and I sort of I came in a little bit later on this once uh, David had already started the ball rolling really with the city as far as trying to get these records and he can maybe talk a little bit about that like the responses from the city initially were uh, no yeah no <laughs> basically <laughs> um, and so I mean we you know we had meetings with the city we had to get uh, legal counsel involved to represent us to sort of help you know sort of move the uh, move the needle a bit as far mm -hmm. as uh, obtaining these records you know we sat down with the, the city's vendor you know how how can we get this information in a way that you can produce it uh, you know you know help us help you here uh, and then finally we we received the information I would say I think it was in the fall of last year and we wrote a few stories just sort of uh, you know looking at overall trends that we saw you know I think it was in December um, you know we sort of looked at uh, things like how many, you know, people who had gotten the most tickets, things like that. Um, and then we really, after in the new year, started sort of digging in and saying like, well, is there something we can glean from this information? Are there, uh, are there aberrations that we can identify just using these ticketing, uh, this, this ticket data? Uh, and that's when we started this, this charting process, which actually that, that portion of it didn't take, 
incredibly long. You, you know, were able just, to automate some right, of it. Right, a lot of it's a lot of it's automated. You're sort of you're throwing together a, a script that does a lot of that work for you. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, and that's so the so the what uh, is sort of the fast part, and then the why is what mm -hmm. takes months of mm -hmm. work reviewing. You know thousands of camera images, things I mean, like that, yeah. I, I assume that the city would, s would at least its initial inclination would be, you are not going to get these four million tickets because they're none of your business. They're, they're pending litigation or something, right? Well, that was their, um, well, w when we first asked for these, I believe it was in April of... of so even longer uh, than I thought, yes. W yeah. we, we asked... We filed a FOIA request for the tickets, and the reason that we did that was because of the the, the, f the federal government was involved in a bribery out <laughs> bribery <laughs> investigation right, right. of of that program itself, which uh, uh, someone has the city official who was in charge of it has been now been charged with uh, with taking bribes from the company that uh, began that program and ran it up until March, um, and so the reason we asked for it was because we thought. You know, Jesus. If if the contract has been corrupted, what about the program? Mm -hmm. How was the program run? So mm -hmm. that's why we asked them. We asked for them, I believe, in April. They said no. Um, uh, we asked for them again uh, in a way that was more acceptable to them. They said no again. It's just too much work. Um, burdensome. And burdensome. I think is the word um, and not until it became clear to the city that we were preparing to sue them, we went out and hired outside litigators. Um, and once the outside litigators got involved, that's when the meeting started uh, mm -hmm. because they they saw the train coming. Um, and uh, eventually, we were able to negotiate with them, uh, and I think we got them in September. So y your editor Jerry Kern uh, wrote a piece in in your paper and said essentially that you know this cost the Tribune a lot of money to hire counsel, and and the city's response cost all of us, the taxpayers, because they had to bill that to us to fight you guys in not giving you this data. But then they ended up giving it to you anyway. Well, that's the way it is in Chicago. It has been that way for a long time. We had hoped uh, during the campaign of Mayor Emanuel that that might be changing because he promised he, he promised us transparency. Yeah. And yeah. You know, a whole new day of transparency. Yeah. Um, it really hasn't worked out that way, but, um, you know, um, but we're, that, we're trying, but that's transparency. So now let's look at let's look at the Uber big picture here because this is not this doesn't all happen on Rahm Emanuel's watch. We can't we can't just be sitting here bashing Rahm Emanuel for this. The first cameras went up in two thousand three. Three, okay, in three. So obviously they were done by Mayor Daley. And do you have any idea how many first went up? How many was it? Was it a small number? I know well, I know Western and Peterson, and there was one other. It on started the south with side. two. Two, yeah, um, two cameras. Uh, and there was this pilot program where two companies had cameras at two different intersections. Okay. That's how it started. That's how it was. All right. Um, and then it grew. But it really blossomed in two thousand seven. So, so okay, that's so it's really it not till seven that we that we started having to live with these things, and that's why we th we asked for data going back to two thousand seven because that's okay. when it really started. That's when the camera system uh, over a hundred cameras and it mm -hmm. grew from there. Now the initial contract, if you want to call it a contract, was with Red, Red Flex Traffic Systems, and they were fired, and now it's Xerox whatever it is, Xerox State and Local Solutions yes. or whatever it is, the, some other company. And they took over in March. They took over in March. Mm -hmm. But, of course, as we know, this is Chicago, and we shouldn't be shocked to find out that Redflix got the contract not by submitting the very best bid above board and being, what's the word, transparent about everything. They just gave John Bills a bunch of money, apparently. That's the way it appears. Right. Well, John Bills um, was uh, the person at the city, a uh, mid-level bureaucrat at the time, who was assigned the task of, you know, taking over this thing and putting this together and bringing company to town. Um, and uh, we began investigating the w w tips that he was involved in a very cozy relationship with, with him um, as early as 2012. Um, and uh, started writing stories about that, and yes, now it, uh, as it appears, the the, the company um, has acknowledged that they paid him up to two million dollars in bribes, lavish vacation trips, uh, condominiums, cars, cash payments through a consultant that he helped hire, 
Um, I mean, even by Chicago standards, this is just, this is outrageous. It's, this it's, it's, this it's, is it's, just beyond what we're accustomed to. Well, it's, it, it, <laughs> what's interesting about, about this case is that, um, you know, th there has been no correlation drawn to the oversight of this company yet yeah. uh, and these ticket spikes. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was the person watching the store for during, during a lot I, of these spikes. I didn't make that connection, of course. During this time, you're talking about what years this was, 11? He left in June 11. June and these spikes were going on in? Prior to that, after that. But I mean, he's the one who oh, set up the oversight system. Okay. He was the guy yeah. Um, yeah. for the city. He was yeah. the city's point man on that contract. He yeah. was the one who had all of the contact with this company right. during that time. Now, now, does he, so he continues into the Emanuel administration and he's still on board or not? He, he, he barely. Okay. Um, right. uh, I, I think he was on his way out when when the mayor was on his way. He was retiring. Yes, he retired. And what's interesting about well, well, uh, uh, the, the the mayor Emanuel connections are these. Uh, when Mayor Emanuel took office and he was pushing for the speed camera program, mm -hmm. the front runner at that time was this company, Redflex, right. who had been do doing such a wonderful job, right. according to all sources, with the why not? Why, why, not just why give mess them with a good one. thing? Right. Uh, right. So they were the front runner. And w one of the stories that we did uh, in the pursuit of this was it was interesting at the time when the, when the speed um, camera contract was still being decided, Redflex had quietly hired a former Rahm Emanuel campaign manager who was one of his congressional campaign, a guy by the name of Greg Goldner, Greg Goldner. as a national consultant mm -hmm. um, to help promote these cameras. And when John Bills retired from the city, he went to work on Red Flex's payroll for Greg Goldner on that consulting deal. Um, and when we, when we remember, wrote, when remember we wrote this that, is all for the children. <laughs> this is just, this is, that's yeah. all it's about. Yeah. When we wrote that story, um, and John Bills' name was in the paper for the first time, that's when we started getting the tips about, whoa, yeah, you know, yeah. you need to look at John yeah. Bills a lot closer. And, and I mean, we, we don't need to spend any more time yeah. on this, but just the, the fascinating thing about the meeting at the top of the Hancock Center, what was it, the day before the bid was the, the, let or something? Well, it wasn't the day before the bid was let, but it was the day before a very critical meeting where the city was presenting to the two final bidders the process and how, you ha and this is what's going to happen. This is how the test is going to go. Mm -hmm. It was a very critical meeting, and bef the, the night before, um, as it's told by um, to a person before the grand jury now, um, it's investigating this. A, a participant there has told us, and now has told the grand jury, that there was a, in the signature <laughs> there was a meeting called in the signature lounge of the John Hancock Tower, and they're overlooking the skyline and sipping wine, and John Bills for two hours is coaching the top executives of this company on how to behave the next day. You got to make it look like we've never met. Well, You've got to do don't this. Don't get too weird about this. He was just being transparent. Yeah. Just, but just only to one side. That's all. So, all right. So we have these, we now have the, the one company, Mayor Emanuel, I, I assume to his credit, decided that this company was no good and threw them out and brought in a new company. Well, after the Fed started investigating bribery <laughs> allegations that were stripped across the front page of the newspaper, yes, that's when he fired oh, them. Oh, that. Yeah. Okay. But he didn't fire them. He, uh, well, he, he, he fired them officially, but then extended their contract. I mean, mm -hmm. he fired them, I believe, in, in February of 2013. They only left town in March. Amid, they continued mm -hmm. to run the camera program through uh, uh, amid this federal bribery investigation and for more than a year. Even even though we're down to our last couple of minutes already, we haven't even touched on <laughs> things like things like um, you know the fact that they had all this equipment that wasn't compatible, and then when Xerox came in, they had to literally replace all the cameras, and the city had to pay for that. Right. So has the city has the city actually benefited from red light cameras? Either of you have any sense of it? What do you mean, safety-wise? I mean, just just in general. If, if you could go back to the first day when the th first idea occurred to the first person, and you could have said, "Nah, don't do that. That's not such a great idea." Well, it depends on what you mean by benefit. The, uh, right. Has the city has the city raised nearly half a billion dollars with a B? Yes, it has. Has it come from uh, Has it come from people like you and me? Yes, it has. Yes, it has. You <laughs> have to decide. <laughs> you, I mean, you have to. I mean, that's up for right. uh, that's up for the citizens of the right. city to decide. Right. Um, you know, I've, I've often thought, you know, you could just raise my property tax bill 10 bucks and 
<laughs> and it would be so much less painful than having to pay these damn tickets. Um, where, do, where do we spend our last minute here? Um, you had, I, I just can't not talk about this, you had this amazing conversation with Rahm Emanuel just like six months after he was elected, where you went to him and asked him if you could see the emails that had to do with how this contract was let and so on and so forth. And it was one of the most, it, I mean, it's like, it's just a giant cringe moment. You, the, the paper printed the entire transcript of the one hour, including a point when he reaches over and grabs your tape recorder and turns it off. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a very interesting interview. It was a very, very good glimpse into uh, him. Um, but it didn't provide us a very good glimpse. Uh, it didn't pull the curtain back on how um, how this decision got made. I mean, that mm -hmm. was the point of it. We didn't just ask for emails. We asked for any shred of paper over there that might give us an idea of what was going on at City Hall. What was, uh, who was he communicating with? Who were his top staff communicating with? What was going on in terms of how this thing was built? I mean, when the mayor took office, he said, I'm gonna be the most transparent mayor this city has ever seen. And still to this day, we can't, we can't look behind, we don't, we don't know anything about how things are bubble up yeah. and how things are formulated. All we know is what he says behind a microphone or what his press office says in a press release. Here's the, I've given you a press release. How much more transparent can I be? One other quick, uh, ju I'm just like, this is just all over the place. Yellow lights, that's a really important part of this. There's some evidence that the yellow lights were actually shortened in the, during the time of these spikes? Um, well, I mean, according to the f photographic evidence in these uh, red light camera photos, uh, yes. I mean, it's in some instances, they did appear to be shorter or, or longer. There was variance that shouldn't have been there. Um, and it was, it was unclear, you know, why that may be. Um, because every, every photo has, has the yellow light time added yeah, there. Yeah. But I mean, that, that, that's like, <laughs> that really crosses the line from government being there to serve and protect to trying to entrap you. I mean, how, how else could you put that? Let me give you an example. A quick one. There was, <laughs> there was one camera up on the north side at 6200 North Lincoln, I believe. Mm -hmm. Lincoln and, uh, M and McCormick. Yes. That for months, if not years, was only ticketing people going straight. That's what it was doing. It's people trying to beat a red, whatever. And then for 12 days, in the, at the beginning of 2012, it, it, and it was issuing one, two tickets a day. For six months, only 100 tickets. Sure. Um, and, and, and then for 12 days, in the beginning of, of 2012, 563 tickets, 560 of them were from, for a right turn on only. And, and, on, and, and, in, and in those 560, about half of them the amber time was four seconds, and about half of them, the amber time was three seconds. Three it seconds. was all over the map. You know what? We have to cut him off <laughs> right in the middle of a sentence here, and you <laughs> have to go online to the Tribune and read this stuff because it is really worth reading to see how your government serves you and protects you. And that's where we're going to have to leave it. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, both of you, uh, David, Good for being here. here today from the Chicago Tribune. You've been watching Chicago Newsroom. It's a community service of Can TV. We'll be back again next week with another program, I hope. And you can find us here on cable, but you can also see us at this address any old time you want, so you can watch the show or listen to it on iTunes. And I'm Ken Davis. We will see you next week on Chicago Newsroom. Thanks. Bye. 28 <laughs> Thank you.